The top reaches of the Maclay River, pristine at the very, very least, and really good for mud crabs, apparently. Excellent, Rex. You get a beautiful system like this. Uh, lovely, quiet, protected waterway, a bit deep. And the muddies will come in here and shelter and, uh, and live along the bottom and, and eat the uh, rotting mangrove plants and things like that. Traditionally, kids love a torch and prawns and looking in the shallows under rocks and that sort of thing. But crabbing, I can remember crabbing at Lake's entrance when I had some fodder on top of my cranium. But being quite serious, <coughs> it is a great Australian tradition. Now, Laurie, I'm going to order a mud crab. Not too much chilli right. with a little, little bit of paradise sauce. Can you let me uh, sort of... Well, I can get you the mud crab, Rex. And I can get someone else who can cook you the sauce up. But we can get a mud crab here for sure. Well, tell our people right across the nation and, in fact, the world how we're going to do that. Well, these are just a simple snare. They're very inexpensive, 6 or $7 each. And you can get replacements. And you need replacement snares. Yep. They work like that. They're called a witch's hat for obvious reasons. Given the shape, this little float suspends them up. And up to the top, we've got our string that takes us to the surface. And it's got our name yep. and address and the name Crab Trap on it. So that's, that, that complies with the law. Across here, if you'll just hold that for me, Rex. Across yes, there, will. we'll just drop a bait in. Something nice and tasty, in this case, a fresh mullet. Yeah. Uh, and we're not going to have them down for a long time today. So we just put the mullet in like that yeah. and just tie him in. And uh, you can use all sorts of fresh fish, or a lot of people, they use the fish scraps, the fish they caught yesterday and filleted it off. Yeah. In goes the flathead or rim frames or whatever for tomorrow's crab bait. And now the other beauty of this is you can, you can leave these sit there for an hour or two while you go off and catch a few fish. But uh, we're just making the bait go a little bit further today, Rex, so we just get him like that. All you do is drop him over the side so that it all sits there nice and neat. Goes down to the bottom, sits on the bottom, and the crab will get sneered up in that. We just leave that like so, and that'll do our fishing for us. Well, he's promised us, folks. And those of you who know me very, very personally know what happens if the promise doesn't come up. That's a threat, there. I'll grab this one, Rex. Ooh, bit of weight. Very good sign. Bit of weight. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Uh, that'll do for starters. Mm -hmm. Now, these fellas have got a pretty mean disposition, Rex. I see. You just hang on to that. I oh, certainly will. We've got one male and one female there. You can tell by the slightly more green colour, and uh, you can hear them making a bit of racket in there. They're not very happy about being caught, and they really do like to bite you. And if they do bite you... Good night, is it? It's good night, yeah, now. We can slowly unpick them. I think what we might do is uh, just cut them out. Because it takes... Uh... And there's always a danger with two that in the net that while you're fooling around with one, the other one will slip the old nippers across yeah. and bite you. For the price of a 60-cent net or 70-cent net... Well, I think if you actually compare in Chinatown the price of your chilli mud crab, you're not going to worry about a 60-cent net. No, I'm not. And I'm not but... going to worry about getting bitten either. Yeah, just, just send the bill to me, will you? <laughs> Here at Channel Rex in Melbourne. All right, Rex. Now, that's the proper way to hang on to a muddy once you've yeah. caught them, or right. any of the bigger crabs. Because he can't grab you. The back legs, they cannot get round and grab you. That's right. So uh, we'll put that one down. These are pretty lethal, are they? You, you, that's what you're talking about. If you, if that nipper gets hold of you... Good night. That's the end of your finger. Yeah. I can guarantee you. That nipper will take your finger clean off. Well, fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, I'll hold him. You'll hold him. Yeah. Just like that. We'll get the knife back in a minute. He can't get it unless he's a contortionist. There we go. And we'll get the lady crab out. You can see all the mud coming off the bottom here. Where yeah. They, where they burn and they get in, they, they give the baits a good old chew. Yeah. Now, are there any regulations in relation to females? Because a lot of states, you know, say if they're in row, yabbies or crayfish, they've got to go back or anything like that. Yeah. In New South Wales, if they're in row, they do have to go back. Yeah. In Queensland, if they are females, they have to go back. So if we were in Queensland, yeah. this, this crab would be returned. Now, so how can, do we know it's female beside the size? You can tell it's a female by this wide flap here. Yeah. That's what they carry the eggs in. And this is the male crab. Yeah. And then he, his male genitals are, are sealed in there. Yeah. So, and uh, when they mate, they, they, they crawl around on top with a female when it's in a what's called a soft shell. Yeah. And, uh, but that's, that's, uh, that's your mud crab from, uh, 
from the beautiful Maclay River. Okay, the serious thing, folks, of course, is to just listen to Laurie and people who know about how to handle these things. And if in doubt, get someone experienced to handle them. But the old uh, mud crab, I tell you what, chilly mud crab, hmm, bottle of wine, then I'll fall asleep. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Laurie, for that. Thanks, Rex.